Welcome to Anime Adventures. I'm Elise Bowman, the voice of Pan from Dragon Ball GT, and I'm with Tiffany Bulmer. Yep, it's me. I'm the voice of Bulma. Yes, that's right, and this is a show where I bring you interviews with anime voice actors and others in the anime world as I travel to conventions and recording studios. We're at Hub City Comic Con right now, and I, I can't it. wait to interview you, so stay tuned. We've had so much fun this weekend, Tiffany. Yes, I, we have. I it's know. Been a blast. It's been fun. Because what's fun about a convention, it's like hanging out with your friends all weekend. So we do the convention by day, we go to restaurants and hang out and chit chat by night. Yes. I love it. So let's talk about Bulma. We have to. Yep, let's do it. You got to do Bulma for 10 years, right? Yeah, a decade. That's a long time. We lived with each other for a really long time, and she was real good to me. So. I like it. So let's hear some more Bulma. Um, let's see. Well, see, Bulma is usually always whining or complaining about something. <laughs> um, sometimes it's for uh, a good cause, mm -hmm. and other times it's just because she's being Bulma. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I don't do that in real life. But no, never. I'm sure you never do. Bulma does. I know. It's just a character thing, right? You have so, to get into character. Right. So yeah. she may say something like, Oh, Jess. And I don't even have any mascara on. <laughs> oh, that's horror. I mean, it's bad. It is. Because mascara is very important. Or, you know, Oh, thank goodness for industrial strength hairspray. She's about as vain as she is whiny. <laughs> Sometimes, that. at least in the early days. Yes. Oh, what I haven't even said. So we're doing something different. Tiffany knows about this, but we're doing something different with this interview. Ahead of time on social media, I did a post asking for questions from you guys. And so I do have questions. I have a few that I typed out, a few that I wrote out, and a few that I have on my phone. So I actually got questions from you guys that I'm going to ask Tiffany. And Thanks actually, guys. I think we should start there. Let's like do questions it. that I have from you. I'm going to pretend not to cheat and like look at the questions. Oh, do you before like to you ask look them. at the questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my first question is from Michael Pagan. This was from my Facebook page. Hey, Michael. And yeah, hey Michael. We talk a lot on Facebook. Um, and he said, well, I guess my main question would be, how do you feel uh, that the voice acting has changed since the 80s for dubbing a anime? It's grown immensely since your first episode, of course, of Dragon Ball. And he wants to hear your perspective on how you feel about that growth. Also, he says, tell her she's amazing and he loves your Bulma. Aww, That's so nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that's actually a really great question. Wait, question. Wait, great question. I still can't talk. That's okay. But yeah, so what do you think about that? Like how it's changed? Um, well, you know, we were all, especially at Funimation, we mm -hmm. were all getting started together. So we were kind of that learning curve. We, we were um, kind of growing pains together, you know, and now we know that we don't do eight hour sessions when you ah. scream for four of those pages. Did you have some eight hour sessions? Um, I don't know what my longest session was, but I do remember having where I would do like three or four hours and then take a lunch break and then come back. Yeah. And uh, we were really under that. the, we were really under the thumb of the scheduling from Cartoon Network. So, mm -hmm. uh, I think now, uh, the way that the scripts are being presented to the directors, I think the timing is just a little bit different. It is. It's a little different. Because I remember those same types of sessions where you yeah. go in for three or four hours, you do get a one hour break and then come back. I think it's changed. Yes. Yeah. And that's not good when you're on a planet and, some, and the planet is exploding and you're being chased by dinosaurs because really you're just doing this all day. <laughs> 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 I love that. Yeah. And he, in cap, said, oh, one more. So I have to say it like that. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you can hear that. I guess they're closing the exhibitor floor. We're at the end of the convention right now. Which is also, if I look like I'm staring off into space every once in a while, it's just been a long day. Yeah. It's okay. It's been, I'm here though. I'm with but you. But it's fun. It's been a great day. So his, this is Michael again. He said, one more. How did it feel? Oh, this is, I like this question too. This is a good one. How did it feel voicing a character from teens to motherhood with a teenage son? Because you don't often get to ask about voicing characters who have grown up through a show. And that's so true. Because you voiced her from what age to what age? I voiced her from the age of 16 all the way to the age yes, of... Yes, and that's the character age, by the way. Not... 
46, which is, or actually maybe she was in her 50s. Was she? In GT. Um, but I, uh, I really loved being able to play her from such an early age because a lot of the other voice actors were cast as their characters were a different character when they were younger, mm-hmm. and then they didn't become their character until their character was an adult. Yeah. You know, like with Stephanie Donnelly did Young Goku and Young Gohan, so even Sean Schimmel didn't start doing the voice of Goku until Dragon Ball Z, whereas I had been doing Bulma from Dragon Ball through GT. That's pretty cool. And was there anything that you had to do differently as your oh, character Oh, I did. Age? I wish we would have started with Dragon Ball. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't know how much screaming I was going to be doing in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, and and sometimes I would go in and I'd be doing a Dragon Ball episode. And then I'd go in the second half of my day, I'd be doing a Dragon Ball Z episode. Ah, uh, yes. So switching between, you know, the real high pitched, everything's real whiny up and up here. And then... Yes. You know, going in and being a little bit more grounded at a easier uh, vocal tone for mm-hmm. me was um, always a good thing. And uh, but you know, sometimes confusing is like, okay, where am I? What universe? What planet am I on? What's happening? Here? Where's the bad guy? Uh, am I 16? Am I 30? Like, what's happening? Which is when you really have to rely on the director to, exactly. to go, okay, here's where we are, here's what we're doing. And I did love, I always say that I really loved doing the Trunks movie, which is really oh. when we find out about how Bulma is as a mom. We see that maternal side of her. Yes. And John Bergmeier did such a great job directing that piece. I really loved working with him. He's one of the head writers at Funimation, or at least he was at the time. And um, he really was able to show all the sides of her Whereas everybody else only gets to see her yelling, screaming, complaining, figuring something out, being under a lot of stress, and uh, that was really the movie that I loved the best. That's really cool, because you see so many dimensions of her. Right, and being a mom, and now that I'm a mom and I'm a wife, I have even more um, empathy and, and love for Bulma and her experience. So cool. Okay, so another question, which by the way, here's what I'll do too, because a lot of people just said, Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you. Some Thank of these you. I love yes. you too. But I'm gonna give usernames. Some of these people I correspond with, so I know your real name, but I'm still sticking with usernames because that's what I have. So like um Drew Fit94, Infinity Saiyan Evan, The Real Nightmare 5, I uh who Hudum. This is one I know the real name, but the username is Aya Hudum. Um, so I'm sorry for the pronunciation. Pescado G, Nicholas Rogers. So all of you guys in some form or fashion just said, oh my gosh, we love you, Tiffany. So I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. So say, thank you so much for saying that. And then we also had a question. Oh, Nicholas Rogers. Say there. And then Don the Second said, what was it like and what's it like being in the voice industry? And if someone wanted to break in, what would you recommend? This is a perfect time for you to talk about what you do, too. Yes. yes. So um, training, training, training is always really good. Uh, we always talk about the fact that, you know, being a voice actor, having a good acting background, mm-hmm. theater classes, all those things are very important so that you can actually know what it takes to create character and then also be consistent in it yes uh so one of the great things that i have the pleasure of doing now is working with a place called media tech institute Mm -hmm. which was started 20 years ago by russell whitaker it started as a recording arts program and uh 10 years into that in uh 19 so they opened in 1998 2008 they opened their film program and now we are opening an acting program yes. and I have uh, worked with the president Tracy Doyle and we have uh, created this amazing um, set of classes uh, that will give you an entire education in um, 60 weeks uh, with an associate's degree. We've been, uh, we have to turn in an application to the ACCSC for accreditation and they um, have approved our program for an associates in acting for media and an associates in art. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a great school. And the great thing about it is, you know, even just becoming a theater actress, mm-hmm. the first time I got in front of a camera, I did not know where to look. I didn't know 
working with a microphone. Well, we're media tech, so the first semester you're in school, you're working with the film students, and you're doing a commercial, and you're um, working on a TV show, and you're you know in the booth doing audio recordings for the audio students in their projects. I love so, that. So like yeah. from the very beginning, you're not just getting your education, you're actually doing real work with real industry professionals and people that are also looking um, to get into the industry and you're working with their projects and they're helping you with, with yours as well. That's so great. It's just like a, I call it a, a, a petri dish of mm -hmm. greatness. You've got future filmmakers, future recording artists and actors all in the same building all being able to utilize each other and, and the yes. six, seven recording studios that we have at Media Tech. We've got a live sound stage. We've got a green screen. And um, it's going to be really fun. I'm super excited and about it. And haven't you had a lot of audio engineers from Funimation come out of Media Tech? Absolutely. Yeah, a I lot thought. of our um, audio engineers, in fact, uh, one of our professors yes. uh, was uh, on the Broly movie. He did the audio for the Broly oh, movie. Oh, really? Yeah, Nagaris. Oh, yeah. Nagaris oh, did, did the... I didn't realize that, that he was at Media Tech. Yeah. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. Okay, so I saved one of these kind of... Um, Stephen Haas asked this. We love you, Stephen. We love you, Stephen. So he does our banners. Yes. He's fantastic, he's and he's one of our friends. So he said... He's, he actually sent some great questions, but I'm going to use this one. He said, what type of questions do actors like hearing most? Because we get asked questions like online and at panels. So I want to hear your answer to that. What do you like to hear most? What types of questions? I like when people ask me questions about what my character would do. Say, like, if Bulma were stranded on a desert island, mm -hmm. what three things would she take? Because for a minute, you get to dive back into being that person again for just like a minute, and then you get to be creative. I think one of the ones, one of the panels we we had uh, in um, New York, I was there with uh, Mike McFarland, and um, I think Josh was there, Josh Martin, and somebody had said, if you could have a theme song for your character, oh, yes. what would your character's theme song be? And we had to think about it for a second, but mine would be... What would it be? Right. You're so vain. I bet you think the song is about you. Yeah. I love that. Well, back to the question. If your character were stranded on a desert oh, yes. island, what is the answer to that? What are the three things that she would take? I think she would take a capsule from Capsule Core that turned into a Winnebago. Okay. Good one. I think she would take some mascara. Mm-hmm. And the four-star Dragon Ball. Boom. That's what she would take to a desert island. Love it. Yeah. Okay, what I want to hear, and this is a question that we all get asked, but I even love hearing it as an actor, and I know your answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because I love hearing her tell the story of how she got cast as Bulma. So oh, will yeah. you tell the viewers the story of how you got cast as Bulma? Um, I failed my math class. But that's not like a how-to. No, 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 not a how-to. So I, I went to, my college was, I really enjoyed college and I did really good at college. I went to Stephen F. Austin for two years. I, I took amazing acting classes, musical theater, dance, voice, all the things. And then um, I transferred to the University of North Texas. And when I was there, I got on an acting scholarship because my mom said, oh, you're not gonna study theater. We're not gonna pay for you to go to school and study theater, but you can be Jane Polly and you can do journalism or one of these other real jobs. Like more practical? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, so I got a scholarship. And uh, so that meant I wasn't gonna take math because if I failed it, I would lose my acting scholarship and I did not wanna do that. So, uh, final semester of school, I have given up the lease on my apartment. I'm moving to LA. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go to makeup school, and I'm gonna be an on-camera actress, film star. Mm -hmm. And uh, I failed my math class. Oh no! And I had to stay in Denton, Texas, in in school for one whole semester uh, to take this math class, so I could get my degree that I took eight years to get. <laughs> So it's real important that I stay and take this five-hour math class. Yes. And uh, I ran into Chris Abbott over the Christmas break, and he said, well, what are you doing? And I'm going to this story about how I was going to move to L.A. 
Long story short, he says, well, I'm directing the show on Cartoon Network, mm -hmm. and I've heard you sing, and I've seen you perform, and maybe you should come audition. And I said, okay, that sounds great. Well, when the audition came, it was, the, it was a callback. They'd already had their open cattle call. I was real concerned that maybe I hadn't done enough research. I had no idea what I was really getting myself into. Right. So I called him and I was like, hey, so like, what am I reading for? And he goes, oh, well, I've got a videotape. The problem is, is I'm at the studio right now uh -huh. and the videotape is at my house. So you're gonna have to break it to my house. <laughs> I was like, okay, that sounds reasonable. So break I go, into Chris Tabbitt's house. Yeah, so I go to his house and he's like, okay, to the left, there's a window, and that's the window to my office, and you're just gonna like, it's unlocked. You're gonna, you know, open the window and crawl through, and then my desk is there, and then to the top left drawer on my desk, there should be a VHS tape. So, of course, I break into Chris Abbott's house, I grab the VHS tape, mm -hmm. I take it home, I look through it twice, and then I went up to Funimation and uh, went into the booth with uh, Barry Watson right. was there yeah. and I read for seven different roles and then he came out and he said oh my goodness you're such a talented actress he shook my hand mm -hmm. and said I could see you in any of these roles and I thought don't call us we'll call you <laughs> good try right. kid yeah maybe Keep next time yeah. don't give up on your dreams and then two weeks later Chris Abbott called and said is Tiffany Bulma Bulma there and I was like who? He's what? like, did you hear what I said? And I said, no. And he said, Tiffany Bulma Bulma. I was like, what's that? And he goes, that's your new character on Dragon Ball Z. And I was like, okay, yay. I still didn't know what that meant. And so um, I thought I wanted to be Chi Chi because I thought, mm -hmm. well, Goku's the main guy and his wife probably is on the camera a lot. So I might have some steady work if I get to be <laughs> the wife of Goku. Funny. Um, but I'm pretty, I was pretty pleased. I think you, yeah, I bet you were pretty pleased. See, I, I love that story. When I found out, we, we started on Namek, right? Right. So my first week in the booth, my the planet's exploding. And I think, there goes the end of Bulma. We're done. Oh, really? I Is really thought I thought? was going to get killed off. Yes. And I was like, well, that was great. Maybe they'll cast me as something that lives longer. And then we went back and did Dragon Ball. And that's when I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> I didn't realize that I'd invented the dragon radar and all those oh things. Oh, my goodness. And I think with voice acting, it's a little different than if you get a play and you're trying to figure out the arc of your character and all those things because you want to be malleable for the director. And the director, it's mm -hmm. really their job to see the big picture of things. Yes, so true. So, um, you know, I didn't want to do too much research. I wanted to be fresh and you know we're doing line readings anyway like whole reads every time we go in there. So That's such a great story. Thank you. I love it. Thank well you. I think we're about to be kicked out because the convention is closing down and you know they're going to kick us out. So I think what we should do, I like to end on a giveaway. We forgot to talk about this but Tiffany's usually up for anything. So I am. We do a giveaway of an autograph poster so we'll do that. Just subscribe, make a comment. Tell us something that you love about Bulma or Tiffany. I love Tiffany. And then I, oh, sorry. <laughs> you really do hair. love me. Do. <laughs> She's attached. <laughs> Literally. Um, and then I have a way to do a random drawing so I will get in touch with you and then find out how to send you an autograph poster or print. As I have learned from Neil Kaplan, it is a print, not a poster. <laughs> totally. So thank you so much. This oh, was fun. Yeah, I loved thank it. You. Absolutely. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye.